All right, brilliant. So what you're looking at right now, and Andy, Renee, I'd love to get your thoughts on this too, because we just launched. This is brand new stuff is supplytrace.org. So you come to the website, it's just like any search engine you've ever used. You can search for right now, any apparel company. Right now we have over one and a half million of them. That's not just apparel brands, that's also their factories. So you can search for any of them. You can see their relationships, which is over 2 million of them, and even their transactions. Those, those bills of lading kind of already analyzed for you, over 3 million of those. And so I'm just going to quickly show you, and this is going to take just a couple of minutes, what does no, Sean, it mean? How does that compare, though, like these transactions and relationships to, say, our paid uh, supply chain tracing programs. I won't mention any names, but are there, are, are, I know this is just apparel, but do those numbers match what the, they have in for apparel? It'll be the same. So they're using the same okay. data on maritime okay. shipments. And right. we actually have been giving them our risk data for a couple of years now. So they have a lot of our data because oh, we've okay. given it to them for free um, so that they nice. can have access to the same thing. All right. And so you, as you're looking at this, this is your, your right now, you're only using maritime data. You're not using like rail or uh, air cargo or anything like that. That's correct. Because air cargo, as you know, right now it's in Congress, whether or not they'll make it publicly available. Um, that's something that's a question. Um, there's some ways of getting it if you purchase it through certain uh, ways of working with 3PLs. But that's not something that we do. We, we're looking at data that's publicly available. And so with this being said, and by the way, the system can handle any data. So as soon as we get air data, then it could automatically go in here and they would map it automatically. So you can come in here and trace any apparel company. If you click on any of these, these are some of the factories we've been investigating recently. Again, we're not tech people, we're researchers. And so we've been researching these factories because they all have forced labor risks. So you can check those out. You can also scroll down and just see a map of red dots that we've been recently investigating. There are, in actuality, on the back end of our system, tens of thousands of red dots. You know what? That's interesting because here, here's the thing. This is on the eastern uh, seaboard of uh, China, yep. and the Uyghur forced labor is in the northwest quadrant. That's right. So yep. that's, you know, that's, that's phenomenal right there. These are... <clears throat> Companies, as you said, on the East Coast that are using Uyghur cotton, that are using Uyghur forced labor transfers. And even though they're on the East Coast, they're still going to get stopped by CBP if they have that risk associated with them. And so, yeah, they're right there for people to see. And these are just a handful that people can check out. Again, there are, there's thousands that they can find the red dots for. And so if I click on any of these, and I'm just going to keep it short and run a trace then you can see for this specific factory, you can see their name, address, their Chinese address. You can see that the system traced almost 20,000 shipments from this factory to the United States. Yeah, you know, over the last 10 years. They have a lot of addresses that this factory goes by. We work on cataloging all of them for you. And then here's the evidence that we know that there's risk, even as recently as right around the time actually the UFLPA was being enforced. Um, and so those are public documents that we then link so that people, as academics, we believe in showing our references and citations. And so you can actually open up any of these documentation for this supplier and say, oh, actually, yeah, they, they have shown that they are connected to this risk. Now, let me ask you, where would you say so this is, this company has investment in other equity instruments in Xinjiang. So they, they, they are investing in the region that you know, where we're mostly invited to look. But how do you get that? Because China has that anti-espionage. New law. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we, we get that through um, corporate records. We do that through public available documents. We look at registries of companies and we're able to access that data and keep it on our back end. Keep in mind, the great firewall of China tries to block yeah. a lot of this stuff. But you but can get it. All, yeah. And all of these links are sometimes from Chinese websites that the government might take down in China. And so these are all archived versions. So if you click on them, they're saved so that you, they can't disappear off the Internet. Oh, my gosh. That's cool, Sean. Thank you for explaining that. Uh, there's the number of transactions. What's interesting, if you go back up, yeah, there is that... 
obviously a very heavily into, you know, uh, all right, 2015, 16, 17, it's the peak and it starts dropping in 2018 and then 2019. And then here's the thing. Apparently the way things are going is that people are moving away from, uh, this, uh, factory, this group because the number of transaction is dropping. So here's the interesting part, and this is where we get really into the, the fun stuff on trade. Transshipments. This company might not be shipping directly to the U.S. It might be going through a third-party country and then arriving in Malaysia. And I'll show Vietnam. You. Yeah. Right. And, you know, the $3.5 billion of goods that CVP has detained since the UFLPA, most of it's from Malaysia. Even after the UFLPA was passed... 500 plus shipments into the U.S. At the beginning of this year, they're still shipping into the U.S., even though they are connected to Uyghur forced labor abuses. I'm going to scroll down just so you can see you got your top customers. All of this is done for you. These are the types of goods that they're shipping into the U.S. right now. But let me show you the fun stuff, which is let's look at their customers. And I'm just going to look at the last two years. I could go back to 2014, but I'm just going to show you the last two years um, because that's when the UFLPA was being enforced starting summer of 2022. Let's, let me show you a map because people like maps. It helps us to understand how the world works. Maps and colors. <laughs> maps and colors. This is a map of the United States and all of the entities that are buying from this specific fa uh, facility. So these are potentially all competitors, but they also could be collaborators. And the really interesting part is... Yellow dots are tier two or tier three connections. So that means that they're not coming orange dots or tier one. That means they're, they're buying directly from this factory. Yellow dots are tier two. So they're buying from somewhere else first, which could be another country. I like to see it as flows sometimes. So this is the same factory shipping into a third party country and then eventually making its way into the United States or into transshipment through the U.S. to Canada. So that is such a cool graph. Wow, I love that graph. What do you call this one, Sean? This is a like, sand key. Very cool. Yeah, it, it's a simulation as far as in the, with the flow, right? Yeah, exactly. It shows you the flow, the trade flow, in a really simple way. And some... Some people are data nerds. You can come in here and just grab a data table. And let's say you got really curious about one of these facilities. You can click on any of them and you can open up their supply chain and understand where they buy stuff from. Just for fun, Andy and Ray, shout out an apparel factory or company that you would want to see what their supply chain looks like. Try LLB. All right, let's see what LL Beans got going on. We got a few LL Beans. So you can see we have some shipment data for Japan, for other places that they might be importing from a subsidiary. I'm going to run an advanced trace on LL Bean. So it looks like they got addresses. Let's click on this main company and see what we got here. So not a lot of shipments into Maine, but you can see where it comes from and the types of products that they bought to their main factory. I'm going to see what other things we got on here. This is their other location. So this is five more shipments. You can see for any company, they ship to different addresses. And you can see all of those addresses that they might import to. Renee, do you want to try out one? Yeah, I want to try. Uh, what's my favorite gene? Oh, Lucky Brand. Well, there you go. I was going to say try Levi, but Lucky Brand, that's that's good. Yeah, we got a bunch of these. Oh, we so can do gonna... Levi. Oh, we could do Levi. I'm, oh, so oh, Lucky Brand's clean. No, Are you Lucky saying Brand's Lucky Brand's right there? So Lucky oh. Brand has many, many addresses, it looks oh, like. And so we're just gonna it. click on the we're gonna click on the first one. So look at this. So Lucky Brand, we're tracing four thousand shipments into the US from hundred and thirty suppliers internationally. Here's all the addresses that this subsidiary shipped to. And if I go to their supplier page, I can see Lucky Brand's based here. It looks like we're just off of Manhattan in, in New Jersey. If I open up their supply chain, you can see their entire supply chain everywhere that Lucky Brand wow, that you chose. There. And, and you it looks see, like they've vetted pretty well as far as their sourcing, according to this. They do look pretty clean. For this All right, I can buy location. my Lucky Brand for, for that location. Okay, yeah. well, you, you, 
Renee, you might have to check out the other ones <laughs> as well. But yeah, all but right, you can right. see there's a, there's a yellow dot on here. So let's let's check this out. But so Sean, you, a you know what's dot. cool about this? Personally, you you can make choices in your purchasing. You know, consumers. I mean, it's important for us to make informed choices, right? Absolutely. People vote with their wallets. And so where, where they buy from influences, you know, where the money goes. But even, you know, any company might have risk. And so you can see this isn't a red dot. This is an orange dot, which means there's potential risk. And so maybe Lucky Brand should check it out and see what's going on over there because there might be something that they need to be aware of. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah. Thank you for showing us. No, for sure. I'm glad that you got a chance to see it. Um, I invite, you know, as many people as possible to check it out and take it, take advantage of the open access that we're providing. I will say that that is absolutely phenomenal. And, uh, I, you know, I, this is well worth checking out. Um, and, and I will say not only as far as incorporating this, but this, you know, your, your demo here, Sean, has helped from a standpoint of the C suite, the, uh, the, looking at it strategically. I could see all kinds of aspects, not only from a financial perspective and, and legal and, and all that, but even from a marketing perspective and operations and things of that nature. Where is it coming from and what, what are we doing with, uh, dealing with this information? So, uh, great demo on. I, I, I like that that response. Uh, it's the wow factor, but it's also thanks for being a part of the demo. Thanks for throwing out a couple names. And if I could just say, we're maybe showing five percent of our data right now because we're just focused on apparel coming from China. As soon as we open up to other countries and other industries, you're going to see the entire supply chain maps start to fill up and. That's why it's worth coming back every month and seeing, well, maybe my favorite company has changed. Maybe the company I work in procurement or customs for has shifted. Maybe my clients have now a risk that wasn't there before. And it's updated constantly. So that's the fun part is this is just the beginning. Mm -hmm.